Welcome back to the live broadcast and we're going to continue our deep dive conversations. The next topic is around collaboration and with me in the studio I've got Darren Henwood. Darren is a technical solutions architect in the sales organization. Darren, welcome and uh, I've got to ask, what are you wearing? Well, I think the first thing Raymond I might have to say is as a superior officer you should probably address me as sir. <laughs> Sorry sir. Uh, but, but that aside, um, Look, this is actually uh, an outfit that I wore yesterday at uh, my tech session, um, and a lot of it stems from uh, a, bit, it's a bit of a history behind it, in fact. Um, one of the great things that I do as part of the collaboration portfolio and looking after it is dealing with APIs and programmability. And um, I think one of the most exciting things about that is its relevance across many different facets of an organization. So everything from sales organizations to HR to how you engage with customers. Um, uh, we can streamline a range of processes into and, and, and deliver better services as a result of that. And so um, what I've done over uh, the years, and, and probably last year was another example where I, I dressed up for my session, and, and last year I was dressed up as a, a doctor with the, the scrubs on and the gloves and everything, um, because I'd built a, uh, an application that was a doctor-specific application. So it had a lot of the patient information in there. It had uh, all the medical information in there as well. But it, what it allowed to do by enabling or bringing in the collaboration capabilities into the application, we we're able to deliver the rich set of collaboration functionality that we have in our native client directly into uh, a business application. Um, which then leads me to why I'm wearing this this year. So I thought I'd up the ante a bit. And um, what I've been doing over the last few months is uh, I actually went out and uh, created a three-dimensional game. A bit like Fortnite or uh, Player Unknown Battleground, uh, where you've got an army commander running around the grounds there. And anyway, as I presented it yesterday, I, I had him run into a command center. Uh, and then inside of that command center, I actually had a screen that was pulling WebEx Teams messages and displaying it inside of my, my three dimensional world here. Uh, and I allowed uh, people from the audience to post messages into their WebEx Teams client. And they're able to see it show up on the WebEx. Uh, uh, interface inside of my three-dimensional game which which made it a lot more interactive and a bit of fun and I was able to then post messages back we were able to see files um, and so on so it was a really interesting way but I felt like I needed to kind of play the part and uh, uh, deliver it in, in that fashion so it was a bit of fun it's it's always important to dress to the theme and it's it's more important for us to be able to show how we do um, apply the technology in a customer environment and, and kudos to you for that. Yeah. Um, so speaking of customers, how does this relate to our customers today? Yeah, okay, so I mean even in the example yesterday, if you're not um, uh, electronic arts or epic mm -hmm. games, or if you're not in the gaming industry, what I had showed the audience um, isn't necessarily overly business relevant, but, but what I brought it back to was um, there's a well-known, um, so, uh, certainly well-known in the banking circles, concept called the $30 trillion transfer. Um, and, and in fact, in my slides, I had a, a, a Google screenshot of it, so you can Google $30 trillion transfer. It. And what it is, is that um, the, and some organizations, and they're not small organizations, so the Wall Street Journal's written about this, Morgan Stanley's written about this, and, and large organizations have written about it. And what it is, is it's about this idea of, uh, this is slightly morbid, but uh, as the, we live in a world where the wealth of, of our current wealth is bigger than anywhere before, uh, any time before. Uh, but what happens is um, they've worked out that over the next eight to ten years, as our older people pass away, that inheritance is going to land on the rest of us generally. Um, but they've worked out that thirty trillion dollars is going to land in the pockets of millennials, uh, which then begs the question: uh, with all of this money in the hands of millennials. Uh, how do you, as an organisation, engage with people of that um, time period, of that, of that age? Because uh, most organisations, when they, when they provide a customer interface, it's either, at best, it might be a contact centre where you call in and press one for sales and two for support. And, Correct. And I don't know if millennials are too uh, open to, to those sort of things. Um, maybe you've got a web page with a little pop-up chat thing. Um, but I think it's, what's really interesting is, is that when you're talking about wealth of that size, even to, to get 0.001% of yeah, $30 trillion, dollars, exactly, it's huge amounts of money, and so it's worth spending the time and understanding how is it that organisations can better uh, uh, reach out to, to people of, of, of that age group, um, and how can they tap into that, because as I said, there's, there's a huge amount of wealth, and I, I don't think there'd be a CEO 
on the planet that wouldn't want to have a discussion yeah, with you. Show interest in, in that exactly. specific capability. So that, that said then, do you find that customers are actually adopting collaboration APIs to go off to new markets and, and drive engagement in their business? I think if you'd asked me that question uh, 12 months ago, I, I would say uh, we are starting to see it. But I, what I've seen in the last 12 months, I've spent a lot of time seeing customers do just that. They're, they're looking at how do I, I take a process that exists today and how can I streamline that by embedding capabilities such as a lot of our WebEx Teams uh, capabilities, our messaging, our ability to do video calling and a range of other things. Um, so even just to name a few, um, we've got integration straight into ServiceNow, a well-known incident management system, uh, salesforce.com. So people that are using that platform today um, without this capability can continue to use it, but as IT just, uh, rolls it out, they can all of a sudden take advantage of the, the, the rich capabilities that, that WebEx teams can provide. And so we can, they can start to interact and do better and more powerful things yeah. uh, and work better as an organization. Yeah, that's, that's mm. quite good because it gives us the opportunity then to work with the, the third parties that's present yep. or resident in our customer base already. Yep. Now, you talked about if I asked the question 12 months ago, the answer would have been different. Um, at Cisco, we don't work in an environment that's uh, constant. There's constant change. That's yes. the only thing. Um, so I, I assume over the last 12 months, there was a lot of new capabilities that we brought into the, the collaboration APIs. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, there's, there's a range of capabilities that have been delivered at an administrative level. So being mm -hmm. able to manage and monitor um, uh, adoption and utilization of, of our platform is, is a lot of work being done on that side. Um, but probably the, the, the most exciting part is, is a capability that has been made available called Persistent Guest. And mm -hmm. so what that does is, I, I mentioned earlier, I'd built a doctor's app and I'd put some functionality into the doctor's app. Um, but in order to leverage the WebEx functionality, the doctor was required to log into what is ultimately the WebEx Teams platform to then utilize the functionality and so what this new capability has allowed us to do is that anybody can actually tap into and use uh, Webex Teams functionality without actually having to set up an account and do some of those steps and so we we think uh, as I talk to uh, organizations uh, just staying on the healthcare um, angle for the, for the time being uh, we look at uh, uh, telehealth and some of the things where we've got uh, uh, patients in rural parts of Australia needing to be able to engage and consultate with doctors um, in, in other parts of the country, they may not have a WebEx Teams client nor have a desire to sign up. However, through such a, a, a API call now, we're able to support anybody uh, uh, on the planet for that matter to be able to connect in and then have uh, uh, conversations with their doctors, to have video calls and all of that's persistent so that uh, if they wish to come back to it later, they can then retrieve the data and do additional information with it. Um, so it's an exciting uh, uh, evolution of the product, okay. uh, but there's a range of other things that we're also seeing, and there's a number of things that are, that are just around the corner which are uh, equally as exciting. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, a lot of customers might not necessarily be in, in your shoes and in your fancy dress and lack some of the coding skills. What are some of the steps that you would suggest that they can take to get them up to speed and help them explore this new world of using APIs um, in, in the collaboration space? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question because I often get people approach me and say, well, look, I either have never done any development or I, I did it at university and I don't really have a desire to do it again. And I think, I mean, we live in a world where the information's there. There's huge amounts of wealth, whether it just be Google searching to learn to program. Uh, there's YouTube tutorials across a whole range of, of programming languages that I think are, uh, are really easy for people to, to uptake and start to use. And I think it's really exciting. And I think one of the things that I try to talk to customers about is, is what's the driver behind why do you want to do it? And for me, it's I, I really enjoy doing it. But but this, I generally talk about three things about why a person should actually look into coding. The first one is it's really powerful for your organisation. So when I write an application, our organisation can be more relevant to whatever it is that we're talking about. So in the medical environment, I can be, have conversations with doctors and administration staff, and, and it's really powerful from that perspective. I think the second part that I talk to people about is it's it's really good for your own perspective. It's a skill that you can then add into your LinkedIn profile. Um, when you apply for a job, whether it be external or internal, it's just another uh, uh, skill that you have that then differentiates yourself against others. Um, so there's the company that it's used, uh, 
useful for, powerful for. It's it's yourself. The third one, which I sometimes get a bit of a laugh about, is it's really important for your kids. And so one mm. of the things, this game that I built, the 3D game that I built, I sat down with my son and we collectively built that together. And, it, and in a normal day, he would spend as much time as he could on Fortnite and other things. And, mm. and for a, a three-week period, it was just me and him um, sitting mm. down building this this game out and because he was able to see it from a completely different angle yeah. um, it allowed him to kind of um, learn some skills around yeah. programming albeit some simple ones but it's the right yeah. stepping stones um, so it was really good from that perspective and even insights I had some tremendous insights into how he thinks so I was able to see because coding is both uh, has a uh, artistic element to it but it's also got some analytical pieces to it um, it makes it really yeah. interesting to get some insights there yeah and, and that's awesome i think that opportunity to spend quality time with them um, mm. and then to help foster that innovation and yep. the development and i think to to your point it's great to have that family time and and the opportunity with your kids but i think more broadly for us as individuals to try something new to be innovative and creative is a great opportunity to be able to do that yeah. um, Last question is probably more around DevNet. I would be in trouble if I don't plug it on the API session. Yes. Um, do you want to give the audience a, a brief perspective on what is DevNet and how they can get more involved in that? Sure, sure. So, so it's almost uh, an element to answering your earlier question is around what DevNet's about. It's about taking people at various skill levels, um, whether it's no coding at all, all the way through to some some well well known developers, being able to to give them some additional skills and training on on not just our APIs and what we have available, but also even best practices. So a lot of tools that are available. Sometimes when we start off coding, we, we do it the hard way, and it's only through talking to other developers, um, uh, both from Cisco, but also even talking to each other. I think yeah. there's a lot of you walk past the DevNet area, and there's a lot of people that are, that are either learning to code or coding and they're all talking amongst themselves so they're learning off mm. each other which I think is equally uh, an important aspect of what it is that we're doing at DevNet there. Um, so there's that part there, there's the, the material that's available, there's the expertise and just exposing people to um, some of the new APIs that they may not have come across is, is, is an important piece to it. Excellent. Okay. No, great stuff. And, and then for everyone that's in Melbourne and listening to this, um, we do have the DevNet Zone and the foyer. Great opportunity for you to go and attend some sessions. They've also got an escape room where you can go and play a game. And uh, it's, it's always interesting if we uh, put some competition out there, then suddenly there's a lot of people that want to participate and contribute in the process as well. Um, Darren, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. It was great talking about collaboration APIs and programmability more in general context. Um, you've already presented this morning, if I can remember yes. correctly. So Darren's session will be made available on Cisco Live On Demand. And timeline is somewhere in the region of the 19th of March. So put that date in your calendar. If you've got an interest to find out more about his uh, fancy dress and the fact that I've got to call him Sir Darren Henwood, then please download that session and watch it at your leisure. Um, thank you for tuning in. We're going to take a very short break and we're going to be right back talking industrial networking. Thank you. <laughs>